Today on What It's Like, 1934, Lincoln, Model K, four-door, Cabriolet. But before getting into all of it, I'm Jay. Welcome to What It's Like, this channel we dive in and give all of the background information on the lost and forgotten cars. We cover the classics, vintage, some exotics, lots of orphan cars, and cars that tend to get lost to time. If that sounds like a channel that you will totally dig, subscribe and hit the bell icon next to it to never miss a video. Special thanks to John Kufleitner's Galleria of Vintage, Classic, and Pristine Cars for letting us feature this amazing car. For those that are new to the channel, I worked for John Kufleitner over the summertime, and they were building this car from nothing. So they turned nothing into something, built this car from the ground up, and it's just a really awesome car. And thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to feature it on this channel. This car, unfortunately, isn't for sale, but they do have a great selection of cars that are for sale. They also can sign cars, so if you're looking to sell a classic car and you don't want to really go through all of the headaches of selling a car, they could sell it for you. All of the information will be linked in the description below. Let's talk 1934 Lincoln, but before we do, let's talk Lincoln as a brand. Lincoln was founded by Henry Leland and son Wilfred, if the name sounds familiar, that is because he also founded Cadillac. For those that don't know, Cadillac was built on the hopes and dreams of Henry Ford. Not many people know that it took Ford many attempts to start and keep, is the key word, an automotive company going. Trying to make a long story short, Ford ended up taking on a bunch of financial backers. He had some sort of disagreement and they basically took over his company and rising up out of the ashes was Cadillac. Leland would sell Cadillac to General Motors in 1909. Leland would create Lincoln Motor Company in 1917. It was named after the 16th president of the United States, Abraham Lincoln, also the very first president in which Henry Leland voted for. Timing was everything. Lincoln was building the V-12 Liberty aircraft engine during World War I. After the war, however, they began hemorrhaging money big time. In 1922, Lincoln became insolvent. Edsel Ford, son of Henry Ford, was like, Hey, Dad, remember when Colonel Sanders took over the Henry Ford Motor Car Company? Not really Colonel Sanders, but take a look at this picture of Henry Leland. There is a striking resemblance between him and Colonel Sanders. Henry Ford was like, I'm in, and bought Lincoln for $8 million on February 4th of 1922. For those keeping score, Henry Ford got even with the guy that bested him in the past, and even took the high road and let Leland and son stay on at Lincoln, but... Leland and Stun didn't stick around for very long before leaving after a dispute. Let's talk 1934 Lincoln Model K, which was broken down into the KA, which rode a 136-inch wheelbase, and the KB, which rode a longer 145-inch wheelbase. 1934 was a standout year because in years prior, the KA was powered by a different power plant, a straight Eight engine. In 1934, for whatever reason, all Lincolns were powered by the same 414 cubic inch displacement V12. Lincoln offered the Model K from 1931 to 1940. 1934 Lincoln Model KA could be had as a two door coupe, seven passenger sedan, convertible roadster, convertible sedan, phaeton, limo, four door sedan. Town Sedan, Victoria, or one could just simply buy the chassis and have a different coach builder put whatever body they wanted on it. All right, now it's time to compare. 1933 on the top, 34 on the bottom. We are going to compare the coupe because I could not find pictures for the four-door Cabriolet. The bodies look very similar. Grills have been revised. The 33 has wheel discs versus the wires found on the 34, but that may have been an option. Biggest difference is the hood vents are smaller and closer together on the 33 versus the 34s can be open. Moving on to specs, it rides a 136 inch wheelbase. It weighs 5,030 pounds. Price, $3,900, which is equivalent to you spending $87,557.91 in the year 2023. 
that is equivalent to almost equivalent to buying a brand new four-door Alfa Romeo. Total 1934 Lincoln production was 2,411 units, of which total Model KA was 1,671, and of that number, only 75 convertible Phaetons were produced. Moving on to engines, only one engine on offer, 414 cubic inch displacement, 67 degree V12, 6.8 liters. It's good for 150 brake horsepower, 3,800 RPM. I could not find a torque figure. Bore of 3.1 inches and a stroke of 4.5 inches. Compression 638 to 1. Features four main bearings. It is backed by a three-speed manual transmission. Let's talk styling. Before we do, just check out how absolutely massive this Lincoln is. It's parked next to a Viper. It's absolutely huge. Look at how wide these fenders are. Flow down. Here's the grill section. The grill isn't straight. It's angled and it's scooped like a shovel down in here. This car is absolutely gorgeous. Look at those headlights. Here's my hand for reference. Massive running lights. Has this nice bar that runs inside the grill that the headlights mount to. Beautiful Greyhound on top. Beautiful wire wheels. This is one of my favorite design aspects of these cars is this fender and how it's designed like this. I love the fact that it has this line that goes on the outside gives it this nice texture effect. The running boards are all textured and they're huge. Here's my foot for reference. I wear a size 12 shoe. Absolutely massive. Even back here, it tapers, it tapers back into the body a little bit, but it's still huge even back here. Also just check out how the fenders, they're more slender back here than they are up here got nice side mounts there are spare tires in these cases notice the door situation it's suicide front doors or coach door and then back here the door opens up the conventional way There is a door lock cylinder there. I just love how quaint that is. Coming to the rear, look at this design aspect of it. So check out the tail lights. Look, they got that light in the center. Why did people do that in the comment section below? This is designed, it looks like a hoof, either a horse or a donkey. Gas filler cap is right there. This car does not have a trunk on the body of the car. Instead, it has a external trunk that you can take off. License plate bracket and light there. Look at the bumpers. This is a convertible, so the top all goes down. So look at this line. Also notice it's a single piece windshield, which is rare for the 30s. It's not that big though. Like there's my hand for reference. It's a very slender windshield. Look at how these door handles are designed. How these hinges are exposed.
just notice the door opens up almost 90 degrees wide open. Door panel situation. The panels are made out of the same material the seats are made out of. This car was built here at John Koo Fleitner's. This car was like, it was nothing when they had, when they got this car here. So the material isn't what would have came stock from the factory. Door handle to get out window crank for the big window. Notice there isn't an armrest. But notice the window is all framed out. And it's a big, thick frame. Just take a look at this interior. Coming down inside the pedal box down here, clutch, brake, gas pedal. Notice the steering wheel shaft goes in between the clutch and the brake pedal. Emergency brake is right here. And it runs perpendicular with the steering wheel column. This has his and her glove boxes. There's a glove box for the man. And there's also a glove box over here for whoever the passenger is. Another thing I want to point out is there isn't a transmission tunnel. Floor is completely flat. This is what over the hood looks like. What first person over the hood looks like. Here is the situation underneath the steering wheel. There is tons of space actually. There's enough space to do this with my hand. There's probably at least three or four inches underneath the steering wheel. On to the button switches and knobs. Starting on the steering wheel, two switches on the steering wheel. The one on the bottom controls the hand throttle. The one on the top controls the headlights. Parking brake, ignition, notice it has a key locking cylinder, choke on the top, spark advance on the bottom, clock, oil pressure, water coolant temperature, amp meter, gasoline gauge, speedometer with odometer and tripometer inside of it, panel lights, and the last one I'm not entirely sure about, so if you know in the comment section below. Up above, there aren't any sun visors. But here's the windshield wipers and how to turn them on and off. Same thing over here. So you can have the driver's side windshield wiper on and not have this one on or vice versa. Rear view mirror looks like it's an aftermarket rear view mirror. This does have a crank out windshield. Operates like that. This one does have the cowl hood vent, which is right here. That's first stop, second stop, third stop, fourth stop, all the way open. On to the glove box test. Here's our test subject. Here's my hand for reference. Here is the glove box in question. The glove box is really, really deep and it's also felt lined. Like my hand can go all the way in up to almost where my elbow is but the opening isn't very big so we're gonna cheat a little bit we're gonna take this hood off because I don't think it's gonna fit with the hood on so here's our test subject without the hood so it only go in that far the hood fits in the glove box no problem at all one thing i have to show is how hard it is to get in and out of this car because of where the seat position is and where the side is so okay oh that wasn't so bad but getting in was a whole lot worse so interestingly on the driver's side there isn't a keyhole to lock and unlock the door, but there's two on the passenger side. So there's one there and there's one up here, the passenger side front, passenger side rear. Just take a look at these handles and how they're designed.
Here's what the rear door panel situation looks like. Window crank door handle to get out. Notice there isn't an armrail itself. Here's what the interior looks like. Here is what the view looks like from the back. This is what the front looks like from the back. Let's take a quick gander at the greenhouse or pillar to glass ratio. That's what visibility looks like out the back. There is a place to put stuff down inside there when the convertible top is in use. Just take a look at all of the wood. Like look at these wooden ribs. Lots of nice chrome. The seat profile. It's a very comfortable seat this is. It's slightly reclined, but it bulges out here in the center a little bit. And the seat has a very wide bench. It's actually pretty comfortable. There are pockets on the back of these seats for storage. There's a pocket for passenger over here and there's a pocket for the person that's sitting in this seat. There aren't any coat hooks or lights up on top. There's no dome lights. This looks like an ashtray. This is a robe, robe rail. You put a blanket, heavy blanket on this to keep warm in the winter time. This is what I look like sitting in the back of the 1935 Lincoln. I got tons of room. It's one of the most comfortablest cars that I've ever been in, especially from the 30s. There's tons of room. It feels like we're in a limo. And the floor back here is completely flat. There isn't a transmission tunnel. So here's the trunk situation. So this is what the trunk looks like. And the material it feels like it's made out of it feels like it's made out of the same material that canvas tops it's almost like a rubber mat material and it's got these vents that you can open up if you want getting under the hood that the hood is pretty light all things considered it's definitely lighter than the pierce arrow hood that was one of the heaviest butterfly hoods i ever picked up but just check out everything that's going on down here starter right over there generator fuel pump Just take it all in. It's a gorgeous engine and how it just fits in here perfectly. Look at how the top, the heads just shine. It looks like they're chrome plated. Big air cleaner canister on top. The data plate's right there on the firewall. Look at how the steering rack comes down. On the positive side, tremendous presence. Grand by any standard. Superb coachwork grand touring car, even for today. Full CCCA classic status. Against it, mechanically complex. 
Super expensive to buy, restore, run, maintain, etc. Certain models are really scarce. All right, now it's time for Would You Rather. Two scenarios today. And money is never an object when doing these. In the first scenario, would you rather have a 1934 Packard Twin 6 or 1934 Lincoln V12 KA or 1934 Cadillac V12? I'm going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free to pause the video. Moving to the second scenario. Which episode would you like to see on Monday, 1935 Hudson Super 8 or... 1969 Toyota Land Cruiser or 1941 Hudson Woody Wagon. I'm going to leave this here for a second. There are two ways to vote. You could vote in the community tab or you can vote in the comment section below. And whichever one wins the vote will be tomorrow's episode. Now it's time for Name That Tune. First person to give me both the correct name of the band and song title correctly will have their comment pinned to the top of the comment section. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below or check out our Facebook group that correlates with this YouTube channel. Honestly, the easiest way to get in touch with me is find me on Facebook and shoot me a message on there. If you don't have Facebook and would like to talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, shoot me an email. All of that will be linked in the description below. Just know I appreciate all of the support. And until next time, my daughter has something to share with you guys. Two.